Hey guys, this is Captain Daniel. In today's video, I want to talk about Asian masculinity and what it means to be a top Asian male or the 1% of 1%ers as an Asian male. One of the things I realized as an Asian guy, right? You know, there's a big community out there right now. What it, they're explaining what it takes to be a top man in today's society because the top man is the one who gets all the girls. The top man is the one who gets um, everything in life, right? It gets everything gets easier. You get the top. But mostly, it's going to be about girls, right? That's why you're probably watching this. You want to get hotter girls. So let's see a good example of the hierarchy of what a top male for a normal Asian guy in high school and a normal white guy in high school. So I actually went to a public high school and I remember there was a actually a uh, Asian guy who was in the sports. He wasn't a team captain or anything, but he was a pretty decent good football player. And there was another football player who was just as good. I think they both played running backs. They were both at the top of tier in terms of staff of the football team and they had both the same group of friends because they're on the same football team. Interestingly enough, based on what I saw with my eyes, the guy and the Asian guy was actually pretty good. Like he had muscles, he was physically good. And at that, in high school, we it's not about the money, right? It's about how your status and everything like that. So in, in a way, both of them were the top 1%. But the white guy was taller, for sure. And he had the typical white guy, good looking looks. And like I said, the Asian guy was just good looking. But the white guy definitely got the hottest in the high school. Okay, he was definitely dating the prettiest girl. He definitely had more popularity where people talked about dating him more. And he was considered the most eligible bachelor, the hottest guy in high school. And the Asian guy didn't do bad for himself, right? He had some girls who considered him attractive, but they always had the comment, go looking for an Asian guy. And he actually ended up dating this one white girl who was pretty. She's definitely, she was like one of those quirky girls where like, is pretty, but she's one of those nerdy quirky girls that she got through. She was smart, right? So they had that similarity, but like the hottest, and you could say some of them were like the sluttiest or the the most promiscuous girls, they all like the white guy. And I'm telling you, in all equality, their looks are almost the same. The guy had a little bit more height. They had the same muscular frame and everything was kind of equal, right? Cause there's no little saying it's money in high school. Um, and they're both on the football team. They're both team captains. And the reason why I'm telling you the story is to make it relevant to what a top man is for a normal Caucasian male in Western society, right? Most of you guys live in the West and in the West, they're saying this, be the alpha man, be the top 1%, be the top G or whatever. And especially, you know, that's, that's the only way you're going to get all the growth. You know, the, all the big guys that you see in the YouTube community, like Dan Bilzer, like you need to be the 1% of guys to get all the growth. And usually that comes with status, money, and power. They don't really talk about games. They said, you can do all the cold approach you want. But if you don't have these requirements, you won't get the hottest girls in the world. I was thinking about it. Is it relatable to us as Asian guys? And well, honestly, I personally think that there's some things for sure. I think men need to be able to provide, right? We should have the duty to be able to have enough responsibility to take care of the people we love. And when it comes to girls, yeah, you're going to end up paying for the first days. I don't care about the soul feminist stuff, okay? Like it's going to, it's whatever, it's, it's getting traction, but you're going to end up paying for the first date. That's what just happened. That's why I tell my students to do. Oh, but if a male, if an Asian guy becomes does what everything what these top what percenter white guys say can he also be getting the same results as a white guy and the answer is why do i say that because let's say an asian male makes a lot more money than a certain white guy i've seen the white guy actually still get hotter girls at their table because it's not only about money it's also who you know right and one thing about Asian males in the West, no matter what you say, we are judged as an Asian male first before you add the label we're rich or we're jacked, whatever. But case in, here's a good point. When I go to America or Europe, I always hear this. You are handsome for an Asian guy. You are muscular for an Asian guy. You are stylish for an Asian guy. No, I did not expect that from you. I never really date Asian guys. So our starting point, no matter what, no matter how awesome we become or alpha or jacked or money wise or famous we become, you will always be an Asian guy first. Oh, gee, thanks, Danny. Thanks for telling me that no matter how hard I work and become the top dog, I will actually never be the top dog. Okay, you can think about it like this. Masculinity right now in this day is defined by mostly white males. White Caucasian males are the ones who are defining what masculine is, right? We don't actually even know who 
what it what it means to be a man right everyone's throwing out their award is it true that some of these uh, thought process of like men are getting too woke we're becoming a little bit canceled a little too much yeah most of the role model in our society who talks about masculine energy being the top man being the best man being the alpha man being the one percent or mostly even you know uh if you think about it andrew yang right he was kind of like probably was gonna he was running for president all that stuff but there is no true like even andrew yang his image was like a very nice guy there's a little bit of dominance in him but even him like who got to a point in politics where you could maybe look to a role model but even then he got outshadowed by the biggest white bully of them all what i'm saying guys is you as an asian guy in western society have to define what masculinity is for you if you follow this traction of what these guys are saying what masculinity or being the top alpha male is you're gonna fail whatever they're saying about masculinity is always gonna be a win for them yes thus having money being famous being whatever being top dog being having a better body or being a physical presence does that help yes i do think those kind of things will help us asian male but you can't use it to compete and try to be the one percent in a white male society these guys are saying if you do this you'll be a one percent in the male society we are not even considered I feel like in the 1% male society. What I mean by that? Have you realized that if you think about all the top role, role models in the Western media, YouTube or social media, whatever, all these guys are considered masculine. Have you seen an Asian guy in there? Even they try to throw our heroes that hero down, Bruce Lee. They're trying to say, does he actually know how to fight? All these white jack dudes are telling, uh, you know, asking the question after a uh, Quentin Tarantino movie about what's upon life, where if you actually watch it, Bruce Lee gets beaten and all this stuff. They're asking this thing of like, is, is Bruce Lee actually a good fighter? The one guy who represented probably the most masculine version of an Asian guy was also getting thrown down and he's dead. So case in point, then you guys can tell I'm a little angry about that. If you guys try to be masculine in the white way, in the white man's way, you'll never, ever, ever win. You'll never beat a guy in all things equal in the West for the same money, similar kind of features of looks, think of body, you'll never win. But most of us will never look like a white guy, right? Some of them usually taller than us, usually. And even if you're a tall Asian guy, it's just, you're never, you're never gonna, beat the white guy who has the same cool stuff as you all right danny get to the point that how do i beat them the thing is you can't beat them and now we can't because media will always support the white man like it's just how the world works okay i'm in asia right now the white man can go to any country and be loved in a way where girls will want the white guy you as an asian man go to any country in the world you're not going to be loved they're not going to say oh i want to i want to date you because you're asian they're just going to judge you first because you're Asian and say some kind of mark and they're either you have the game to come to sim all the way. What do you need to do? Like I said before in this call, you need to define what masculine is for you. If you really think about it, I mentioned this in another video, but masculinity that we have in the Asian culture is actually our fathers. No matter what relationship you ha have with your dad, the fact that your dad came to another country in a foreign nation and really worked his ass off to create some kind of living, it depends on whatever happened with your dad, but I'm saying in most case scenarios, someone brought you to this country to live a great life, like a little, little better life for each other. And that in itself is masculine. He went to a hero's journey. He went from a home country where he was super comfortable and traveled thousands of miles away and tried to start a new life for his family, for a better, better opportunity. That's masculine. A man who wants a family, takes care of his family, who makes sure he does everything he can to get his dream girl and never settle for a lower status girl in his eyes and gets his dream girl and carries a dream family, that's masculinity. Um, a guy who creates, you know, a huge amount of success financially and creates a community where, you know, he has women or he goes to the lifestyle, but he's the main host of the party, he throws amazing parties, and he makes sure he does it in an ethical way and you know he he takes care of the girls he's gonna treat the girls he lives very that's masculinity so what i'm saying is there's so many versions of masculinity and whatever you grew up with whatever your family values are whatever you want let's say you do want a hair or you do want a wife you want a kid or whatever you want just do it the way that is in your own kind of way because as asian men we don't have these specific role models to follow if we don't have these role models to follow you need to find your own way as an asian male then define what a, what it is to be a man to you and if you don't know my recommendation is start with bruce lee and philosophies and start with a guy in your community that you know or a friend who is just getting girls naturally in his own right there's some guys who just get girls and if he does that you start with that right so like don't you don't have to venture so far out and they have these big dreams and because so well, i like like i said i do think male you need to make sure you achieve peak prowess in all things in your life right but this whole thing of like 
just get rich, get the nice car, get Jack. I think there's a little bit of an after step, right? Because I feel like that recognition is just purely for white males, mostly in um, a dominant white society. Because even if you give that advice to black guys, most of these black guys have to be athletes, right? They're athletes and they have a physical dominant purse. But talk about the nerdy black guy. Tell them a nerdy black guy to get smart, get whatever, get rich, whatever. It's not going to get the same result. But black guys are also considered masculine. But I'm saying like these advice is mostly for white men. So you need to, as an Asian male, define what it means to be a man for you and how dating plays that role. So if in dating, having that one girl, you go for her, you fight for her and you get her and she's that dream wife girl and that's masculine to you. Don't change that. Don't don't try to get all these hot bitches in Miami and all these club girls. Like, trust me, like sometimes is masculinity really uh, uh, being a top guy really just uh, sometimes don't get me wrong. I like having intimacy with multiple girls, but is it really having sex with girls who really come to the club because, you know, you provide a certain value for them? But here's some three quick tips how to be masculine as an Asian guy. First, I do think get Jack. Have muscles. You don't have to be super ripped, but have some muscles because most white guys are bigger than us. And Asian males, I'm not thinking like take service and get huge, but have a presence where you're lean and ripped. Like I said, Bruce is a good example. You look like him, you'll be fine. Um, second, I do think have a career or whatever that keeps you stable financially. So you don't have to be the billionaire or hundred millionaire like they say you should be to actually have the growth you want. But I think having a good stable income where you can take care of yourself, usually Asian guys would take care of our parents. And after you take care of the main priorities and then you could take care of your girl without paying for everything and being like sugar daddy. As long as you can do that, still do things for her nights in there. I think that's a great way to be masculine because you've got everything else you handled. You're financially good. You might not make like F you money, but you have a life where you can travel the world, take care of a girl, take care of a family, and everything's good. You're not stressed over it. If you get that point financially, you're good. You got to learn how to gain. And I'm not just saying to say that. You really got to know how a woman thinks, how a woman feels, because you need to know an extra skill. You need to know something extra because all these other guys, because they're white, and when they get the money and the car and the physical look, they could just get girls because girls like, you know what, he's hot, he's rich. What else does he need? Even if the guy has no personality, the girl will just go to him. But with game, you need to show some kind of personality. And best thing is you need to make her feel something special because other white guys can just make her feel special by just being himself and being white. But for you, you have to show her, hey, I'm somebody new. I'm Asian. I never dated you. But well, let me tell you why you should date me too why I could do it. And you got to give her that emotion behind it. And once you do that, that's, you do need to work harder. And here's the fact, you need to know something more extra. You have to provide something extra, get girls who are not Asian and even some Asian girls from the West because they somehow are brainwashed that it's better to date a white guy than an Asian guy. So I want to end it with this. There's always going to be someone richer than you, someone who's more jacked than you, someone who's smarter than you, blah, blah, blah. As an Asian guy, hopefully that's true, but there always is it, right? And especially if he's white, race will play a part in Western countries. Because it's not that people are racist. I think it's people are just comfortable with what they already know. They see in media that a white guy is masculine. They see in media that a white guy is strong. Why would they change their mind every single, single day they're inundated that white guys are should be their ideal male type? It's not their fault. It's kind of what social media does, what everything does. That's why you actually see a lot of white girls like to date Asian guys in Asian countries because they get used to you know, the, the, the Asian look. So if you're living in the West right now, forget what the whole Western media is saying about you need to get girls. And one time I was like this whole red pill community too, is like just become the best man you can be um, in terms of money, get rich as possible, whatever. Because I don't think that really relates to it. Certain aspects of it. Take what you want. Take what triggers you in a positive way. Take that. But the rest, define what you are and follow these three tips about, right? First, um, you know, make right amount of money, work out and learn game. Because those three things, even if you're not the best of the best of each three things, it'll take you pretty far, just like it has done me. All right, guys, it's been a pleasure. Kevin Daniel, out. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.